Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to lesson 15 in this series on making an RTS game in Unreal Engine 5. In this video, we'll be making it so we can move the building. In addition, this will address the issue of the building spawning in at coordinates 0, 0, 0. This video in this series has been brought to you by Patreon sponsors, and you too can help this channel out. And all you have to do is hit that like button down below. And if you haven't already, well, why not subscribe and also get notifications when new videos come out by hitting the subscribe button and the notify bell below. Okay, open up your projects and we'll make a start. Alrighty, so here we are back in the editor. And as I said, we're going to make it so we can track the building with our mouse. So we're gonna to go to core, player, and then we're gonna to go to our camera pawn first. In our camera pawn, we need a new function to get the camera boom target arm length. So we're gonna create a new function called get current arm length. And the reason why we need the current arm length is we need to know how far away the mouse is from the ground. So we're gonna have it as a pure function. It will be part of our camera zoom and we'll have one return, which will be, and what we'll do is we'll move this to the side. We will find our camera boom. We will get it and we will do target arm length. We wanna get it, not set it. And we're just gonna plug that into the return node there. Okay, there we go. And now we're gonna go over to our player controller. That's our movement component. Okay, and then we're gonna go over to our player controller. And in our player controller, let's find our event tick and grab everything below it. And we're just gonna move this down slightly. Okay, let's grab our tick, move it down so we have a bit of room to play with. And here what we're going to do is we are going to get our camera pawn reference. So let's go to our references, get our camera pawn ref. From our camera pawn ref, we will get current arm length, let me just zoom in, there we go. Okay, so from this, we will add in a float. And this is, if you have issues here, this is what you need to change. So this is how we're gonna say, how far away from the camera is the mouse. And I'm going to pick a large value of say 2000 Unreal units, there we go. From there, we're going to set our mouse position. So what we'll first do is create a new function and this function will be called set mouse position. It will have one input argument. It will be our trace distance. So how far from the mouse are we going? And this will be of type float. This will be a pure function and it's gonna have one return value. We'll take care of that in a minute. What we're going to do is we are going to right click and type in convert mouse location to world space. All right, let's leave that there for a second. And then we're gonna do from our execute pen here, a line trace by channel. All right, so our trace channel is landscape. We want to ignore self. We will not do any debugging for this one. So for our world location, we go from there into our start. There we go. And I'm just gonna line that up there and move them to the right just a bit. We'll add a reroute in, which I'll then we'll line back up. From there, we'll do a float or a vector plus a vector. There we go. And let's just move that to the right a bit. And that will go into our end. For our direction, what we're going to do is we're gonna do a multiply and that will go into that plus there. There we go. For the multiply, we're gonna take the trace distance here and convert it over. There we go. It's converted for us. We don't have any of those weird nodes. We don't have to split anything. We're good. All right, next what we're going to do is we're gonna have a branch here and we are not gonna use the hit out or return value here. Sorry, we are going to use the hit out and we're gonna break it. Let's expand this out and we want to know our hit actor. We wanna make sure it is not null. So we're gonna do not equal and we're gonna leave that blank. If it's blank, then it's null and we haven't hit anything. Likewise, we could use this, but I tend to find the uh, hit actor works better for this one. Okay, with that done, we're gonna do a return and our return will be our location. And we're gonna plug that into there. And this is our relative cursor location. So let's just rename this as relative cursor location. Okay, let's go back to our event graph here and grab that function we just created, plug the trace distance into that plus float there. Okay, from this, then we are going to get our mouse position. We're gonna do this every tick because we need to know almost every tick where our mouse is. So mouse position. Mouse position will be, well, we'll just put this in do not edit. 
there we go. Because we never edit this, we never set it, it does it itself. And then we need to pass this to the building manager. So let's grab our building manager, pause there, and go over to our buildings folder and into our building manager. In our building manager, we're gonna create a new function called set mouse position. So what we do here is we just do new function and this will be set mouse position. And this will be, oh, let's move this to our preview category as well. And this will have one input argument of type uh, vector, which we'll name mouse position. So let's make that a vector. So right click this, promote to variable, and this will be called mouse position. And there we go, add a return node in, and we'll put the mouse position variable also into our category of preview. Go back to the player controller from our building manager, do set mouse position, log that into the set there, and then plug the mouse position, which I just saw the typo of my double E, really do not know what's going on with my keyboard there. All right, so from there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our building manager and we're gonna create a new function called get grid snaps. So let's just add a new function in, get grid snaps. And this will be, our values here will set how much our buildings move by. And I'll show you where to change the value if you want to make it a smaller snapping value or a larger snapping value. But for now, let's go into preview. This is a pure function. It has one return of type vector which is going to be called grid snaps. All right, let's just unpin that for a moment. Let's get our mouse position. Let's get it here. We're going to break this, so let's split the structure, or you can pull out and do break. All right, so what we're gonna do from here, from the X is we're going to add, and we're gonna add 50. This is not our snap value, so just leave this as 50 for now. We're gonna get from here the floor, and then we are going to divide this by a value, and by that same value, Ironically, we will multiply that back in. Now, I have found that because we're using uh, integers at this point with this floor, that this that you do need to have both the divide and multiply for this to work. All right, so what we're gonna plug in here is gonna be a variable called snap values. This is the value you want to change if you want the movement of your buildings to be smaller or larger. All right, I'm just gonna put another reroute in, plug that into there, put in yet another reroute in. All right, let's compile. Our snap value for now will be 100 Unreal units. All right, and then we're going to get our return here. We actually could have just left it plugged in, I guess. Drop it down there. We're gonna do a make vector. All right, so for our make vector, this is our X that goes into there. For our Y, we will literally take all of this and duplicate it down here. Plug that into your Y, and that goes into that Y up there, okay. With that done, the Z value just goes straight in. And let's go over to our event graph. And in here where we have our spawn preview building and our blink preview transform, well, this is where we're actually going to get our grid snaps to convert over. So get your get grid snaps, pin that into there. There's our lovely conversion node, which we haven't seen in some time. Good to see that node again. And well, let's test this, make sure this works. Let's hit play and hit B. There, it's spawned. We can see that it's in the ghost. Of course, now it's not deleting the other ones, but we'll worry about that later. All right, now we need to follow the mouse. So to do that, what we're gonna do is in our building manager, let's move this destroy down. Mostly the destroy does nothing because there's nothing there yet. That's why those buildings remain. We will do another custom event called track mouse. And now I could get a validated get, I'm not going to, I'm just gonna get my references for my building, however, and I'm gonna do is valid this way. Plug that into there. And then from this, actually I don't want it under there, I want to reroute. We are going to do something called move preview. We need to pause for a moment and go over to our building master. In our building master, we will create a new function called, well, move preview. So let's create a new function, move preview. All right, and this will go into the category, of course, of preview. Okay, so this one, is a bit interesting. This relates to the issue I talked about in the last video with the functionality being slightly better in C++ than in Blueprint. So we'll talk about that in a moment. First, let's add in an input, and this will be new location, which will be of type vector. All right, so first let's deal with the part that is an issue in Blueprint. Grab your current building mesh, do set world location. All right, we're gonna do sweep and teleport. We're gonna plug the new location in there 
There we go. Okay, now the weird part, or this is the weird part. So we're only doing this in the BP version because the building only moves on the Z axis in the BP version. This helps address that issue. I, again, can skip the step in C++. From there, the part that we do have in the C++ version, as well as here, is set actor location. So if you skip this step and you're doing it in blueprint and go straight into the set actor location and all my tests so far, the building doesn't move correctly. It just moves on the Z axis. Now the root, however, does follow the mouse and this is gonna be sweep and teleport as well. And then we're gonna have another function here which we'll take care of in a couple of videos called set material overlap. For now, we will not be touching that. That's actually gonna be a very long video. All right, let's go back to the building manager. And in the building manager, we're gonna grab off the building ref and do move preview okay there we go plug that into there and put another reroute in line those up and then we will do our grid snaps for where we want to move to okay let's test this out let's hit play okay i'm in a map i hit b uh oh it's not following the mouse okay what's going on let's work out what's happening so i'm just gonna exit out of the preview and then we'll work out what's going on by the way i already know what's going on i pulled my usual classic of i forgot to actually implement something so let's go back to our building manager and in here we've never called the track mouse up which is why we're having this issue so what we need to do is go up to our set preview and just after we do our set preview we want to then do a set timer by event and what we're going to do is we're going to have this loop every 0 0.01 and we're going to do a create event and the event we're going to create is our track mouse so now we're calling that up and then we're going to want to save this timer so we can invalidate it later so we're going to put it to a variable and this will be our preview timer handle okay now preview timer handle will go into the category of preview of course but now everything should work so we hit play and there we go, we see the building follows the mouse. Okay, cool, that is that done. Let's take care of our building rotation real quick. All right, so to rotate our building, we're gonna start in our building master. We're gonna create a new function called rotate preview. So new function, rotate preview. This will be in our category of preview. We will then pull off the execute and do set actor rotation. And we will plug that into there and then we will do a return node. Okay. That's pretty simple. Let's then go to our building manager, however, and implement these events. So I'm gonna move the destroy down further. And then I'm going to do a custom event of rotate preview left and one of rotate preview right. Okay, I'm gonna get my building reference here. I'm gonna duplicate it. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check, is it valid? Again, I could do an invalidate a get but we've been doing that for so long that, hey, let's just do this node instead. From here, I'm gonna have a reroute and I'm gonna have two other things coming off this reroute. I'm going to do rotate preview. There we go, on is valid. Let me just put another reroute there so it lines up a bit nicer. And then we're gonna do the current rotation. So we're gonna get from that reroute, get after rotation. We are going to break this rotation. So we're gonna split it or break it up to you on how you want to do it. And we're going to do make rotator we're going to plug the x and y back in we're going to rotate on our z axis so we're going to yaw our preview now you can put whatever value you want in here if you want it to show that they have to constantly do it then use one but no matter what value you use besides one it should be a value that is that can equally go into 360. so i'm going to use the value of 15. so i'm going to rotate 15 degrees so i'm going to do plus 15 here so this is gonna rotate at 15, I could do 90, I could do 30, I could do 180. So we have two rotations, but this means eventually we'll get back to where we started at. All right, so move these two nodes down a little bit further. We're gonna copy all of this, including the reroute down here. I'm gonna pin it into there. The only thing I'm gonna do different here, besides move the destroy preview again, is this is no longer addition, is subtraction. Now I could have done this as one polymorphic function. I'll let you work out how to have done that. Give you a hint, you need an argument in here. And the next step that we do, you would then set the value you're placing into this argument or the step after the next one we're gonna do. The next step we're gonna do is set our key bindings for rotating previews. When we implement them, that's when you do the update I'm talking about. So go to edit, go to project settings and in project settings, go to input, sorry, the Microphone is literally covering that side. We're gonna add in two axis mappings, and this one will be rotate preview 
left, and we're going to use the left caret, or the left sun sign, which is stored on our comma key on a US and UK keyboard. And then we'll do rotate preview right, which will be on the greater than caret, or the closing caret, or closing bracket, which is on the period or full stop key for UK and US keyboards. All right, go back to the player controller. And in here, we are going to, well, this is time related. So we're gonna to go to the right here and we're going to do rotate preview left, grab our building manager there and do rotate preview left. Plug that into there. Then we'll do rotate, rotate preview right, grab that, there we go. And pull out this building manager and do rotate preview right. All right, let's go ahead and test this out. Compile, go back to the map, hit play. Here we are, spawn a building in, it tracks our mouse. And then that's our left rotation. And then our right rotation. Let's go all the way around. And now we can move our building around. All right, in the next video, we'll take care of what happens when, well, we're somewhere like this, where we shouldn't be able to spawn or place a building. Or here, where our building, you notice how the building follows a mouse? That's, yeah, that's nice, isn't it? Notice, however, it only gets a certain distance. That's too far away for it to properly see what's going on. But hey, we should be able to spawn there and saying we can, it's blue. Well, we're gonna have it turn red when it's in the wrong location. So we'll take care of that in the next video. For now, this takes care of what we need to do. So if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button down below. It really, really does help this channel out. And so do comments and so does subscribing to this channel. If you want to take your support a bit further, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Patreon supporters at upper tiers get instant access to all ongoing and completed projects on YouTube, and at other tiers get access once projects are completed. But regardless, get access to videos early. All right, that said, I look forward to seeing you in the next video, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.